Welcome to ProScan's Medical Vignettes, and today we're going to cover, a, again, a, a difficult subject for many of you, the, the nomenclature that is used for some of the more obscure and unique partial thickness tears that occur in the rotator cuff of the shoulder. So let's get started, and here are some of the names. The list is, to say the least, intimidating. We have the CID, the Concealed Intratendinous Delamination. And with these, intraosseous lesion penetration may sometimes be seen. We have the, the posta lesion, which is a non-concealed partial thickness tear. In other words, it can be seen by the arthroscopist, known as the partial articular surface tendon avulsion. The rim rent. This is a non-concealed avulsion involving the articular cartilage surface that exposes fibers in between it and the cartilage and may not heal. So it's an important one to recognize. The Stoss lesion. This is a non-concealed supraspinatus tendon articular sided lesion. It does not involve the foot plate or footprint. It is not concealed, so it is visible from the inside out or by the arthroscopist. The paint lesion. This is a non-concealed partial articular sided lesion with interstitial extension. Non-concealed meaning again it can be seen from either the superficial surface or with the paint lesion from the arthroscopic inner surface. A complex lesion, self-explanatory, a mixed lesion that defies description. The paraglider or wing lesion or sign a bursal surface lesion that deforms the surface of the rotator cuff so that it bunches up and forms a wing-like or bird-like structure. Split versus delamination tears. Already discussed in one of our earlier vignettes, but a split tear goes out two sides of the rotator cuff, medial and lateral or superior and inferior. Whereas a delamination tear is either completely intrasubstance or only exits one side, either superior or inferior, either medial or lateral. Interval separation tears, tears through the fibroelastic membrane of the anterior interval, the posterior interval, or the posterior inferior interval. The intervals representing those fibroelastic interfaces between the major rotator cuff myotendinous bundles and units, seen best in the sagittal projection. Cystic tears, small tiny holes or rents that allow the diffusion of synovial fluid tracking along major tendon bundles, creating an elongated proteinaceous water signal intensity mass that parallels the orientation of the tendon. And the sentinel cyst, a subtype of cystic tear in which the end of the cyst becomes more bulbous and looks like the tip of a thermometer. Here is our first unique descriptor diagrammed, a type of non-concealed tear. It's non-concealed because it can be seen on the articular side by the arthroscopist the supraspinatus tendon articular sided tear, which is rather focal. It doesn't have great side to side dimension. It doesn't have great penetration in a medial lateral orientation into the interstitium of the tendon. It's rather narrow in its contour. The Stoss lesion. Here is the Stoss lesion in actuality on an MR. On the viewer's far left, the Stoss lesion is seen as a focal articular sided abnormality with swelling in the adjacent supraspinatus tendon and a small amount of peritendinous fluid. A small amount of fluid in the bicipital groove and sheath is also noted. This Stoss lesion, because of continued perpetuated exercise by the patient, has then subsequently propagated medially at a later date. It has also penetrated 
the bursal surface. So it is no longer a concealed lesion. It is visible from the outside in if the surgeon comes down from the top, splits the deltoid, and looks from the top down, he or she will see this opening in the superficial fibers of the rotator cuff. So what was a concealed lesion, the Stoss lesion, has now over time become non-concealed. And in the lower right-hand corner is a diagram of, again, the simple Stoss lesion before it has propagated. Another descriptor for rotator cuff pathology is the paraglider or wing sign. When you have a relatively deep but bursal sided tear, the edges of the rotator cuff may bunch. This bunching may produce something that looks like the wings of a bird or of a butterfly. It's probably best depicted not so much on the diagram where you can see one wing of the bird, the other wing concealed at this moment because the diagram is only a two-dimensional one. If we look at the actual MR image, the superficial bursal sided tear has a broad, almost elliptical configuration. There's one wing medially, another wing laterally, due to bunching of the interstitial fibers from a relatively robust bursal sided tear. Sometimes these bursal sided tears will have just a few fibers covering over them on the top. So these bursal sided tears may be concealed just barely or non-concealed. In other words, you may see right on top of them when looking from the outside in. Now, next time when we get together on some of these unique rotator cuff partial thickness tear names, we'll show you the concealed interstitial delamination with penetration of bone, the paint lesion, a rim rent, and compare it with a CID or concealed interstitial delamination, interval separation tears, cystic tears, sentinel cystic tears. Hopefully this will give you a grasp of where to focus your efforts and descriptors. But in assessing these tears, the most important thing is you understand whether the tear is interstitial, bursal sided, articular sided, sitting in the foot plate or footprint, and whether it is concealed or non-concealed. In a later vignette, we'll get into concepts of length and width. Thank you.